Morning, Bante. Morning, Brian. Bante. Good morning, Brian. Morning, Bante. Morning, Brian. Good morning, Bante. Good morning, Brian. Good morning, Saturday. Good morning, Good morning, Bonte. Bonte. Good morning, Brian. Good morning, Good morning. 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 Morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Brian. Good morning, Bante. Good morning, Bante Ji. Good morning, Bante. Okay, good morning everybody. Let us begin with the metta meditation. May all beings be happy and secure. May yeah, all, all beings, beings have happy minds. minds. Whatever, Whatever living beings there may be, without exception, exception weak or strong, strong, long, large, medium, medium short, short, subtle, subtle or gross, visible or invisible, living near or far, Born or welcome to birth, may all beings have happy minds. Let no one deceive another, nor despise anyone anywhere. Neither from anger nor ill will should anyone wish harm to another. As a mother would risk her own life to protect her only child, even so towards all living beings, one should cultivate a boundless heart. One should cultivate for all the world a heart of boundless loving friendliness, above, below, and all around, unobstructed, without hatred or resentment, whether standing, walking, or sitting, lying down, or whenever awake, one should develop this mindfulness, this called divinely dwelling here, not falling into erroneous views, but virtuous and endowed with vision, removing desires for sensual pleasures, one comes never again to birth in the womb. Let us begin our silent meditation. <coughs>
May the suffering be free from suffering. May the fear struck be free from fear. May the grieving be free from grief. So too may all beings be. With this metta thought in mind, try to understand the answers to this question that Brian freed for me. Uh, first question, <clears throat> please help me understand how to cope with what seems to be the particularly unfair and untimely death of a young man. I understand that everything changes and passes away and that life is unfair, but those statements seem cold and heartless in the face of such a death, especially considering how very hurt-filled this young fellow's life had already been before it was suddenly extinguished. Yes, um, this is very true. Uh, so long as uh, we have, uh, we love someone and uh, suddenly his life is snatched away. I like to bring up uh, two stories which are um, even similar or worse than this. One story was Patachara's story. Other story was Kisagotami's story. In the Buddhist literature we find these two stories. Patajara lost her husband when he was trying to find some source of shelter for her to deliver her baby in a very heavy rain on the road. She was going to her home to get parents helped to deliver her baby. On the way, there was a heavy rain and her husband ran into the woods to find some leaves to make little shelter for her to deliver the baby in rain without too much uh, problem. When he was trying to cut some leaves from a tree, a snake bit him and killed him instantly. She was waiting in pain, waiting for her husband, but she couldn't see him coming, and the baby came out after delivering. With this infant, she went into the woods to see for her husband and found him dead in the woods. And then crying, she was going home on the way. This rain is, was so heavy, the rivers, tributaries, creek, creeks all were filled. So anyway, she has to cry, she has to uh, she had another baby with her, with her. With these two, she went to the river bank and she faced a dilemma. She could not take both children across and swim. So she left the older child on this bank and she swam with the little baby and when she reached the other shore, she left the baby 
and was coming towards the other older boy to take with her. And then she saw a big hawk coming down to pick up that little infant. She shouted. Then the little older boy thought that mother was calling him, so she, he jumped into the water to reach the mother. And when she turned back, the hawk had taken away the infant. Now her husband died, both of her children died. And she was so devastated, grief-stricken, she was crying, wailing, weeping, and she went and then towards her home and on the way she met a person and asked him, asked, asked him, she, he asked her why she was crying, she told the story and said that she was going home to see parents. Then this man said, don't ask me that. You know, last night there was a heavy rain and the rain uh, brought down a huge tree and killed your parents. Now she lost the same day her parents her husband and two children. And just imagine the sorrow, pain, grief, such a devastating blow to her life. Finally, she, she even lost her clothes. She did not know that her clothes was slipping away from her body. She was so sad, so grief-stricken, hopeless, and then ended up in Jetavana, where the Buddha was teaching. And um, everybody was shocked to see this naked woman crying and ru rushing into the group. So somebody threw a piece of cloth to cover her nakedness, then the Buddha taught her the sister, this is this doesn't happen only to you. This is the nature. Some when we uh, when our karma uh, affects us at that time all these unexpected things happen and you uh, must uh, try to console yourself, try to understand the, the nature of this life. Now, you must arouse your spiritual urgency. A spiritual urgency is that you have a life and this can happen even to you. Therefore, try immediately from this moment onward to be more m uh, mindful more diligent, more compassionate, more understanding the nature of this life. So you can continue your practice. If somebody is so grief-stricken, go on, keep crying. Cry and cry and cry until your tears dry up. Until your tears dry up, keep crying. And you may mourn for several days, keep crying. And then slowly and slowly your grief will subside. And then you understand the very thing that you mentioned in your question, impermanence. When you understand that, then slowly, slowly you try to practice more and more meditation and see the impermanence 
more and more clearly within you, in you. You cannot, you cannot learn it from somebody. You cannot learn it from somebody. You may, at the beginning, you may blame the Dhamma, blame the Buddha, blame the teacher who teaches us impermanence. But eventually, when you see it happening within yourself, in your own life, then you will begin to appreciate, honor and respect the teaching, the truth. You cannot run away from the truth. Truth is in you, for you, with you, by you, and you have to accept it as it is. You have to, uh, you cannot ask somebody to come and clean your mind. Just like asking somebody to come and clean your room, do your laundry. You cannot do that. You have to do it yourself, looking at your own mind and trying to understand this reality without blaming it. Surely, anybody when loses very dear person at a very unexpected age, the person will be very upset. Kisa Gautami also was like that. Her story is even more uh, similar, but she died, she lost her only one child. When her only child, Kisa Gautami was a cousin of the Buddha, when she had a, a baby uh, who was just a little toddler, very beautiful child, when he is running about, playing and so forth, suddenly he died. And she did not know that she, the, her child was dead. She never believed that the child was dead. And she never thought this child at this age would be lifeless. She even didn't believe that. So she carried the baby thinking that the baby was sick. And she went person to person asking them to help the help her to recover the baby, the child. They all knew that the child was dead. They sent eventually they sent to the Buddha. Buddha as soon as he saw the child the child, he knew the child was dead. So what the Buddha instead of uh, uh, trying to console her by telling something uh, unrealistic, uh, he used very, very skillful means. He asked her, Gautami, go, bring me a handful of mustard seed from a house. When she was uh, about to leave the Buddha, she said, Gautami, make sure that you bring me a handful of mustard seed from a house where nobody has died. So she went and asked, went to the first house and asked a, a person in the house to give her some mustard seed. Of course, they were very happy to give her mustard seed, handful of mustard seed. When they were bringing a handful of mustard seed, she asked, by the way, has anybody died in your house? He said, of course, my grandfather died, my grandmother died, my, uh, grand, uh, my uncle died, uh, just recently uh, my cousin died. Then she said, no, 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 I don't need much. She went to the next house, the same story, next house, same story. Every time she went to see Master Sir, one house to another, every step, every moment, she thought of this very truth. And she thought the Buddha wanted to find, wanted me to find Master Sri from a house where death was, had never been occurred, that he wanted me to understand the truth the reality. And every more step she took to walk, she contemplated on this. 
and she thought this is what Buddha wanted us to understand. So she returned to the Buddha, and she, uh, Buddha taught Gautami, this you will never find. This is not the, not hap- this doesn't happen to one person, one family, one country, one village. This happens to everyone that is born. It can happen as soon while we are in the womb. Sometimes it uh, happens uh, as uh, uh, spontaneous abortion. Even the mother doesn't know the baby is dead. One day after birth can someone die, two days after birth can die, a month after that one die, year after that one can die. This, there is no guarantee, no guarantee of life, no guarantee of life. You can have all kind of insurance for everything, but there is no real life insurance. You pay a lot of money for life insurance, can you, can anybody insure your life against death? No. So, friends, we always have to think in terms of truth, reality. Don't blame the truth, don't blame reality, don't blame the teacher, don't blame anybody. Just try to understand this very nature. When I say this, you might think Bhanteji is more cruel than anybody else because I asked him to help me. I asked him to help me. Instead of helping me, he began to preach me about uh, about death. Of course I had to do that. That is what we had to do. It may not be very pleasant. It may be very bitter. Very bitter at the beginning. But slowly as your emotion dies down, as your emotion slowly becomes weak, until emotion becomes weak, until you, it, it uh, fades away, you, if you like, you keep go on crying. Cry and cry and cry days and days and days until your tears dry up. And then you begin to look at, look around, turn around and look at, the, look at what we said, what the Buddha said, what the Dhamma says. So you cannot go against the Dhamma, my dear friend. I don't know who you are. You cannot go against it. This is not a kind of belief. In the belief system, it can happen or not happen. There is no certainty. This is the system of facing facts, facing truth, accepting truth, go by the truth, and live with the truth. And therefore, Try to understand this slowly and gradually. You will realize what the Buddha said, what the Dhamma said, what we teach following the Buddha's example is true. You will accept it. So for now, I took the took more than 20, min, uh, 20 minutes to answer your question because this question is extremely important especially this time. This time, more than any other time, because this is the time that so many people die. So many people die. Every death actually is unnecessary. Every death is unfair. Every death can bring, make people angry. That is very natural. What to do? And there are many things that we can do. All we can do at this time is trying to protect ourselves, protect others by following the necessary instruction that is out in the world for us to protect from this. You don't expect anybody to protect you. No one can protect you. No politician can protect you. No wealth can protect you. Nothing can protect you but by yourself. And therefore, friend, uh, I hope other people will not get disappointed by uh, for, uh, disappointed me spending so much time on this question because that is uh, 
that is very important question for everybody to remember, including myself. I feel my friends died, my friends died, and I know how everyone feels. My friends were not some from some of my friends. I even did not mention to anybody. They are not right. No, not too many people know about them. But <coughs> I understand the nature of Dhamma. And therefore, friends, I tell you from my experience, from the knowledge of Dhamma that I learned, and uh, therefore, my dear friends, take this very seriously. Okay, next question. Thank you, Bhante. Could you please suggest some strategies to keep ourselves inspired to continue this wonderful practice after the 13th of December? Okay, 13th of December will be my last uh, uh, participation in the retreat. Uh, after the retreat will be uh, uh, Monday, uh, Monday, Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, I take off normally, and therefore my last participation in this uh, uh, series of talks would be on the 13th. After that, my dear friends, I very, very, very much uh, appreciate and I ask you to read Maha Satipatthana Sutta. Maha Satipatthana Sutta, don't read it as a novel or newspaper or another book, literature, literary book. That is, entire Buddhist psychology is there. You have to read it very carefully, read one passage and think. There are 21 passages in the Mahasatipatthana Sutta. First you find out these 21 passages, and these passages begin Ityajyantanga, thus one becomes mindful of internally, externally, and so on. This passage you find in uh, uh, mindfulness of the body, uh, six places. Mindfulness of feeling, one place, seven. Mindfulness of uh, mind, uh, one place, eight. Mindfulness of uh, the uh, Dhamma, uh, mindfulness of body, six places. Then, uh, uh, feeling one place, no, uh, feeling one place, then uh, uh, chitta, uh, mind one place, so eight, uh, what is that? Dhamma, five. Dhamma. Five. Dhamma, no, Dhamma. Dhamma, five places, so these eight, uh, out of these five places, uh, we have uh, uh, four in the uh, f first four, and the last nine, all together twenty-one places. You can write down. Let me see the pen. <clears throat> okay. Uh, mindfulness of body, five. Eh? Mindfulness of body are fourteen. Mindfulness of body? Fourteen places. She says four, fourteen. fourteen. Yeah, mindfulness of body? She says fourteen. Fourteen places. Fourteen places. Mindfulness of twenty-one places. Mindfulness of uh, body, you find fourteen places. Yes, Dante, it's fourteen. And then. Uh, and then Vedana. One place. Chitta. One. one. Nivarana. One. Nivarana one. Uh, Kanda. And Kanda one. Ayatana. Ayatana one. Bojanga. Bojangas. One. This is 20, and I'm missing the 
Four Nobel Truth. Maybe the Four Nobel Truth. The last one is 21. Four Nobel Truth. Four Nobel Truth. Five aggregates. They are also one. One, and that is 21. Okay. These are the 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, right. Okay, these are the 21. What are the 21? Mindfulness of the body, 14. Feeling, 1. And uh, Chit, 1. Dhamma, 5. And Dhamma, 5. Dhamma, 5. All these uh, uh, 21 places, uh, you can uh, see and read them very, very carefully, reading one section, one part at one day, only one day, one section, and think about that section entire day, and take another section, the, for, the mindfulness of body 14 section, take one section at a time, like mindfulness of breathing. While breathing every moment you think about it. Think what the uh, what mindfulness of breathing tells us. You think about it. And then think about mindfulness of uh, walking. Do Since you are walking every day. When you walk you will see every aggregate body feeling, perception, thought, and consciousness. All these aggregates are also rising and falling, rising and falling, rising and falling, along with your walking. Also you may think, while walking, your heart beats, lungs uh, functions, kidney functions, liver functions, uh, pancreas functions, and what do you call your 32 parts of your body also are functioning. Every cell in your body is functioning. Oxygen coming and uh, re revitalizing every cell and they lose oxygen. Again, lungs bring oxygen. Heart pumps. Heart, when heart pumps once, it does four things at the same time. Oxygen, deoxygenated blood comes to the heart and oxygen free blood goes to other parts and uh, 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 what do you call uh, uh, oxygen uh, get send blood to the liver what do you call uh, lungs to get oxygen and receive uh, ox oxygen rich blood from the lungs and so forth Receiving, sending, receiving, sending, all these are doing, heart is doing all the time. All of the millions of things are happening while we are walking. And then walking is a very powerful, dynamic, mindful meditation. And think about it while you are walking. And this is how you will be completely engaged in your meditation. It is not something that we do only in sitting. It is something that we uh, are engaged all the time in our life. I think, friends, if you think and meditate, you don't need somebody's instructions. You will see everything, all the instructions given in Mahasatipatta and Sutta. All you have to do is to apply it to your life. There are three things we have always have to do. Pariyati, Patipati, Pativeda. Pariyati, learn Dhamma. Pariyati, learn Dhamma. Patipati, put that Dhamma that you learn into action. Whatever Dhamma you put to you learn, put that Dhamma into action. That is Patipati. Only then can you see the result. That is what the Buddha did. So, uh, uh, what do you call Satcha Kitcha Kata in Dhamma Chakra Pavatana Sutta, he mentioned it. And these things have not been explored and expanded and explained in detail anywhere, 
But when you practice Dhamma, you will see all these things coming into reality. Paripatti, uh, pariyatti is learning. Learning, learning, learning. And learn, don't keep learning all the time. Put, the, put what you learn into practice. When you put what, in, what you learn into practice, you will see the results by yourself. You learn how to cook. You get all the recipes. Recipes never make you tasty. You never taste any food when you read recipes. You have to prepare it according to the instructions. And then taste it. Only when you follow these three steps. Learn the recipe, prepare the recipe, and eat. Go to the doctor, get the prescription. He gives the prescription, and you don't put the prescription under your under your pillow. You never get well. You got to prepare the prescription and follow the dosage exactly as he said, as he advised, and so forth. Everything in the Buddha's teaching falls into these three categories: pariyatti, patipatti. The pariyatti means theory, patipatti means practice, pativeda means realization. It is very scientific, very scientific. Science theory, you learn theories and then put the theory into practice and then you find the result. So friends, from 13th of this month onward, for the rest of your life, <laughs> that's what you have, you have to do. <laughs> Last question. Thank you, Bhante. Um, one person also mentioned in the chat box, they recommended um, your book, uh, The Four Foundations of Mindfulness in Plain English. So maybe people can get a copy of that from their library or buy it online to accompany their reading of uh, the uh, Maha Satipatthana Sutta. Um, the last thing is, uh, I'll just, for those of you maybe who this is the first time you're with us this week, I just want to announce uh, the last time this week that we'll be having, as Bhante Ji mentioned, a uh, one-day virtual retreat via Zoom a week from today, actually. I want to put it up on the screen here for everyone to see. But we've also po posted it on our Facebook group and under Community News on the Bhavana Society website. So you can see the, the flyer here with the date next Sunday, December 13th. Uh, the full schedule, the three teachers will be Bhante Ji, Bhante Rahula, and Bhante Sadajiva. Um, and uh, the last thing I'll mention is the it's a Zoom retreat. We're hosting it on Zoom. And the link is the same one that you used to come to this session today. And the password will also be the same, which is Metta. So we hope you'll join us next Sunday. And, um, and we will see you again on Thursday. Yeah, next Sunday. No, no, thir Thursday the 10th, no. right? Thursday the 10th for the, the regular sessions? Yeah. 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 So we'll see you again on Thursday the 10th. Okay. Okay, friends, uh, let me finish this session with our regular uh, metta wish. Uh, we want, very sincerely want to wish you heard me talk about death. We want then uh, this is out of compassion and love for everybody. We must uh, make sure not only wishing, but we also want to do whatever we can to help us and others to prevent them from untimely death. People die accidentally, that is untimely death. People die of unexpected sickness, that also is considered 
to be untimely death. But this time, this untimely death can be prevented, prevented, if we all do what is necessary and sufficient to prevent this untimely death. And in the first place, clean our heart with the very sincere heart we want to wish. May everyone be free from this sickness. Those patients who are in hospitals, taken care of by very compassionate staff, doctors, nurses, uh, and the hospital staffs, anesthetians, surgeons, and whoever uh, give uh, support them, and they they are the front liners. They risk their own lives. Let not only be patients be recover recover very quickly, but these frontliners, we want to wish them not to have any contact, any, uh, what do you call, uh, in, in, infection, and uh, may they be safe and uh, continue to be healthy, to support and continue their marvelous, compassionate, understanding, loving service and uh, help these people to recover from their sickness. So, the, the, on the one hand, they help these people. On the other hand, they must help themselves. Be very careful. And there are many people who already, as I mentioned earlier, have lost their loved ones and they were grieving. We want them to be free from grief as quickly as possible and continue their Dhamma work and deepen their understanding of Dhamma so that they will see the Dhamma and they be be free from not only one life suffering but the suffering of in suffering in samsara. And there are <coughs> many mm, generous people who have, some have supported uh, discovering uh, uh, vaccine. Now it is some vaccines uh, we heard are working well and soon uh, we hope the vaccine reach people, hospitals and uh, necessary people to uh, give this vaccine to patients so that this will be stopped. This uh, vi virus will be stopped. And we want, wish, we want to wish this happen very quickly. And there are uh, leaders who are trying to r make this happen soon and may they be successful very quickly. And overall, may all of them be happy and healthy and peaceful and continue their Dhamma work and be liberated from suffering. Thank you for participating. <clears throat> Thank you, Bhante. Thank you, Bhante. Thank you, Bhante. Thank, Thank you very much, Bhante. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Bhante. Thank you, Bhante. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Thank you, Brian. 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 Thank you,